Any apologies? Um, apologies from Councillor Stapleton. I think Councillor Allen is deputising. Um, and it looks like there aren't any further apologies. Okay. Oh, Councillor Connor isn't. Okay. Councillor Connor is not are there any declarations of interest in relation to any item? He said any matter of urgency to admit onto the agenda as a delay would not be in the interest of the efficient operation of the service. No. There are no matters required with the exclusion of the press and public due to the disclosure of the exempt information. Okay, right, we'll go on to um, the agenda now, folks. Um, Agenda item two, notes of the previous meeting, mm -hmm. pages five to fourteen. Those are brief, They agree. Any yeah. matters arising from them? Yeah, so I can sign them off, can I? Okay. Right, we're going on to um, agenda item three, Thank which you. is <coughs> the service delivery plan. 2019 <coughs> to 2020, pages 15 to 112, and Mr. Chief. Thanks, Chair. Uh, first report is to request that members consider and approve the service delivery plan for 2019-20, which is attached in Appendix 1, uh, and note the, the contents of the community fire rescue station plans, which are uh, contained within Appendix 2, with the recommendation that members consider and approve the said plans for publication on our website. Uh, just take members then through the service delivery plan and its purpose and function. The, the plan, in its, in its first instance, reflects on some of the, the historic outcomes so of the last year, between 2018 and 2019, and then goes on to set the kind of context for our performance, our aspirations, and our ambitions through uh, 1920. It also includes specific references to our integrated risk management plan and the proposal contained within and the functional plans which are developed by each one of the, um, the directors or area managers with regard to their particular service area <coughs> and how those functional plans will then complement the delivery of the integrated risk management plan. Then in appendix 2 which contains <coughs> the station plans, it is how those station plans then inform the functional plans and how the functional plan informs the integrated risk management plan. Uh, so it's kind of a distillation down of our our aims and our objectives and our priorities into things which are tangible outcomes or outputs on a particular uh, fire station or within a particular function. So it will include the likes of number of home fire safety checks, include the number of uh, visits to uh, business premises, number of talks to, uh, to the community and so on and so forth. So that's the kind of basis of the, the service delivery for the purpose and its functions. The way it's constructed then is that the open pages introduce the plan, it moves on to talk about our, our corporate mission, our aims, the core values that underpin the plan, and then talks about Merseyside more, more broadly and a review of the five districts of Merseyside. Then it moves on to, as I say, look at the, the performance, which is covering the period of 2018-19, which is on page 35 um, of your papers. Uh, and I'll, I'll draw members <coughs> to specific areas of the performance which hopefully will inform their ability to approve them. The kind of same bit of a focus on the, the red areas that we've indicated as, as not performing in the way that we would wish them to. The total number of emergency calls received uh, and total number of incidents and number of fires in the side. All three of those relate to probably a particularly busy period through the summer for Merseyside Fire Rescue Service and the UK Fire and Rescue Service more broadly and they relate to accidental small fires. Now accidental small fires don't normally uh, trigger or you know very highly on these plans but the fact of the matter is given the hot weather there was a significant number of those small fires which have had an impact you know, directly on small fires but also on the number of incidents we've responded to uh, more broadly. If I come down with the estimated performance and just draw members' attention to um, the, the, the performance indicated, the benchmark indicated related to uh, sickness absence, our, our estimated performance of sickness absence is 2.73% against the target of 4%, which is a significant improvement in performance against 2017-18 um, 
plans against the attendance in the workplace. Again, as I draw members further down, uh, again around positivity, um, the number of dwelling fires, the number of deaths in accidental dwelling fires is shown as, as three as an estimate form is actually four. Um, but if we were to maintain and, and protect four or five deaths this year, it's compatible with last year, but members will recall that's the lowest number of fire deaths ever recorded uh, in Merseyside. So again, we would be mirroring the previous high levels of performance. Returning the, the page over, um, again, the only red area is as indicated, which is accidental small fires attended, which again, I feel probably detail there, um, and the rest of the work is, is green and, and really positive. The plans themselves and the service delivery plan will be changed to reflect the actual outcomes rather than the estimated outcomes, but given the fact that we haven't come to the conclusion of the year, uh, there's still a little bit of time to be had between now and the end, and so it may differentiate or deviate slightly from what's commonly described. Pages 20 to 21 uh, describe our key performance indicators for 1920, and again, members will be aware of the methodology that we apply. We apply a kind of a, a, a science behind the figures that have been identified, which <coughs> is performance over a number of years and give us a, a challenging performance indicator that we will aspire to attain. And again, they are reflective of um, having gone through a performance management group to be ratified prior to being presented to members. Then, as we move through the, the, the service delivery plan, we then move on to the integrated <coughs> management plan. Again, members will be aware of the key aspects of the integrated management plan. So that's why I have public consultation on the 14th of March, uh, but again it's highlighted uh, within this document. It also includes our quality objectives, uh, which are contained within the plan and, and, and monitored and measured again. Then we move on to the area around functional plans, which commences on page 51. Uh, moving forward, uh, functional plan, functional plans detail uh, the objectives for each one of our departments, um, our functional areas in regards to how they will complement the delivery of the plan. What we'll draw members' attention to in regards to the functional plans are a number of issues which have been identified, or uh, certainly have been initially identified through the inspector program, which um, are have been included within the functional plans now. So under operational planning, uh, and we continue to review risk information. It's particularly focused on sharing that risk information cross border, and the action underneath, which is uh, in relation to to training, again reflects cross-border training and something that's picked up in the inspector program, so already our functional plans have sought to address that. On the people and organisational developments, there's a, a, an element of the, of the, the functional plan which also includes uh, developing cultural values of the age which, which make the fire rescue service a great place to work. So again, reinforcing the fact that we would want to um, <coughs> ensure that the culture um, of this organisation is such that people thrive. <coughs> and then we've also got elements within protection on page 36, which talks about succession planning and that the investments in protection again, which is included within the IRMP and real reflection of, of our resourcing of our protection team post Grenfell Tower incident. And then it moves on to talk more broadly around finance, legal services, um, and, and, and so on and so forth. All of those functional plans and all of those actions contained within underpin or support the delivery of the and then finally, from page um, 64 onwards, page 64 onwards details the, the, the station planning process. Uh, each one of our stations uh, looks at the demographic, looks like the, the, the levels of deprivation, the number of incidents that they respond to over the course of the 12 months and, and, and prior. And then they develop plans in conjunction with the station managers to reflect their functional planning arrangements that are in place. And they are discharged at a station level. So that then does go down to outcomes which we're seeking to achieve, but equally outputs which we know, if completed um, effectively and efficiently, will result in the outcome being secured. So the ideal example of that would be number of home fire seat checks directed towards people over 65 in a particular community would result in a reduction in the accident of ground fires, which would result in the number of fire deaths and injuries as, a, as an outcome secured. And again, we go on to detail all of those plans um, so members of the public can access them at the point in time to know what their particular fire station is doing to contribute to uh, their safety. And then finally, <coughs> in 110 and 111, it just describes the integrated risk management planning process, which again, 
um, without the end taking the feedback from the inspectors, certainly indicatively they've said, um, particularly around dev role and this, that our planning processes around integrated risk management planning are very, really, very really effective in creating plans which are effectively delivered and improve the safety of residents and public on their side. And on that point, Chair, I will take away from that for a couple of questions. Yeah, for me, I think that the three salient things for me is the, the core values on page 23, the financial challenges that we, we face, page 31, and then going on to the supplement, the IRMP supplement, take this over at the, the 20, 22 mark. So, any questions? I, I think it's a wonderful report, and I'd like to say thanks to everyone for the <coughs> report together, especially all the individual reports for the fire stations, which I think is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Councillor Thank you, Joe. Great, uh, an excellent report. Uh, just a small point on page 53 under the operational response, equality, diversity, and inclusion objectives. It does end on a bit of a cliffhanger. It says, uh, it, at the end, it just says, this information is. <laughs> I'm left wondering what it is. <laughs> I was worried about your reading. Page 53, Andrew. Yes. I'll, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <definitely. laughs> well, I'll either complete the cliffhanger uh, or remove this information. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Any other questions? Come on, fill in your Everyone happy? Yeah, well, I don't think anyone could come up with a better uh, response to everything than the yeah. <coughs> yeah, And if the is on, as I said, at the budget meeting. So does that conclude today's meeting? Everyone happy? Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Chair, okay. and uh, very well done. Okay. <laughs> uh, just to say, uh, I think there is a briefing on the fire in the car park. Uh, available for members if they'd like to stay at the seat. I think you had, I think there was a uh, presentation on this a few weeks ago, and uh, there wasn't enough time.